he thrusts his fists against the posts but still insists he sees the ghosts. There you go. And it's... I don't know where I got it from. I, I, uh, I know it's in a Stephen King novel. I can't remember which one. I think it's a... Uh, it's a line that actors say in order to uh, get their mouths working before a performance. He thrusts his fists against the posts. It's like that. The bridge is from, well, geographically, it's from near Liverpool. Historically, it's from my childhood when I was about eight or nine. I used to go and sit underneath the bridge with friends, with some mates, and we'd, uh, I don't know what we'd do. We'd, we'd go there and be a bit naughty, but I, I think I was too young to be smoking. I think we just ate sweets and maybe threw rocks and, you know. It was just a place to hang out. It was a weird, it was a bridge that was sort of slightly outside of town and had a had a kind of secretive quality to it a sort of a, you know it, it i mean i grew up in quite an urban environment and the bridge felt like uh, nature it felt like we were we were we were in a in some kind of rural hollow where uh, where we couldn't be discovered essentially we couldn't be we couldn't be seen i wouldn't say it's a coming of age it, about an experience of coming coming of age it's more it's one of the things in my life that is is kind of lodged in my uh, in my memory um and the that's kind of the reason to make it was to was to um, was to exercise the memory of it was to cast it out because it because uh, I find these kind of memories become too um, become too great in the scheme of things they become they they become too overwhelming and then and then the bridge itself seemed like a perfect analogy of that of being a, a kind of memory that you carry around that's as big as a motorway bridge it's just there uh, it's so that was the, that was the kind of initial impulse to make it was to was to rid myself of it I, once once all the the render the concrete render is finished and there's some aging processes go on because I want the bridge to look like it's both new and very old. I want it to look like it expands across uh, the, the, the decades, uh, across the 20th sec latter part of the 20th century. Then there's going to be some posters that are, are fly posted, bill posted onto the, uh, onto the pillars. Yeah, various, so, so the idea is to have these various kind of fly posts up as you would see in the street but that also works as a kind of gallery I guess as a kind of a as a way of as just a form of display essentially so the idea that you know on the bridge once you're below the bridge it feels it's like a real experience of a bridge but it's it's a it's a phantom bridge it's not a it's not a real bridge I guess um, but it's, it's literally a concrete bridge, it's a concrete object. Uh, so that, and I wanted that, I wanted it to feel as real and as um, physically uh, imposing as, a, as an actual bridge. Um, but again, it's, it's not, it's a, it's, a, it's a badly recollected memory of a bridge. You know, it, it, I always, I, I'm always worried that it comes across as too nostalgic, or that I'm too nostalgic. I am, I am very nostalgic and I'm very <laughs> sentimental, but I think that 
that nostalgia and that sentimentality around the past is continually being um, presented in, in, in the now. Yeah? I, think it's, uh, I think it's impossible now to escape your past uh, or to escape the past. It's, uh, it's that kind of, you know, when I was thinking about the bridge, I was trying to think of the bridge in terms of it's, you know, it's this, uh, it's this structure that allows things to pass over. It's about time, it's about things moving across. But if you're underneath the bridge, you're, you're out of time, you're kind of, you're, you're in this, you know, I guess it's, uh, it's asynchronic, <laughs> I think the term is. I think in, 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 I don't know where this comes from, I don't know if it comes from film, but there's, there's synchronic time, things moving, yeah, you know, forward, progressing, and then there's di diachronic time where things are just, uh, it's, the, it's the space those things happen within. So the bridge is like that, it's kind of, it's this, it's this kind of frozen moment that time passes through. And I guess in a, in a kind of really clunky way, that's a, an allegory for, for now, for this present moment, the, 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 the access we have to kind of all times, all places, the everywhere, the every when, you know, we can call them up. So it's something, the bridge is like some kind of allegory of that condition. The original, you know, the first kind of iteration of the bridge was uh, was a, was to, I was thinking of it in I don't know, a sculpture, maybe a bit going a bit far, but a, a, you know, it was an installation, and I was thinking of it in terms of just uh, um, almost like a, a an atmospheric effect. But the more time I spent with that bridge, with this kind of pseudo bridge, I realized uh, that it presented a kind of a kind of theatrical opportunity. Some some it, it's all called for a, a play to happen within it. And so that's what this sound piece is. It's it's essentially uh, I saw I guess like a radio play. Um, that is about, it, it's kind of autobiographical or a, a sort of memoir. It sort of begins in 1964, the year I was born, and ends in 1999, the end of the 20th century, essentially. So it's about, it's about the second half of the 20th century. Uh, and so the sound reflects that, the sound reflects each decade, each era, and it's a way of providing a kind of texture, I guess, to this, to this kind of progress, progression towards the end of the century. Here at SMK, it, the opportunity is to, is to, is to realise that idea properly, is to have the bridge. I mean, that was the initial, again, that was the initial impulse, but then it's sort of grown since then, but to have the voice inside the bridge, so you just walk into this room and there's a bridge kind of speaking to you, like a, like a slumber, like, it's like you're hearing the thoughts of a slumbering giant who's kind of talking in his sleep. That was the kind of idea. So the music is all, is mostly samples. It's samples and some field recordings, I guess, and some, um, and then my voice. My voice is, some part is like a voiceover, a sort of narration, other part it's more embedded in the bridge. I mean, the idea I've had, the kind of fantasy I've had, all the way is that the bridge is like a, a giant puppet and I'm ventriloquizing it. So that, that's, the, that's, that's how I'm kind of thinking of it, that I'm, I'm using the bridge to speak and say things that I can't 
say directly mm. or immediately. It's kind of mood music. You know, I want, I want, basically what I'm after with music is I, I, want, I want your experience in, 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 the, in the space to be psychedelic. I want, I want you to feel with the lights and the, the kind of scale of the bridge and the music. It, I want, the idea is that it all acts on you in order to put you in another state. Into a, into another, um, into an altered state. You know. The lights of the set. I mean, the lights are very much come from our like drug related. When I used to, when I was young and I'd take magic mushrooms. The first sign, the early indicator that you were coming up, that the drugs were starting to take effect, would be that the the street lights, the sodium lights, had, had become very pronounced. You'd notice how orange or how red or how yellow everything was. And that's and that's when you'd know you were gonna start a trip. So that's mm -hmm. why I started using the sodium lights, is that they to me they're very trippy. You know. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that people come into the room and either lie on the bridge, on the slope, on the ramp, or lie on the floor and uh, and spend some time, um, half an hour. <laughs>